Okay, so this video is about setting the radio um, for a repeater. Now, I'm going to first uh, set it up uh, based on these steps here, and then I'll talk a little bit about what a repeater does. Not everybody knows what a repeater really is, especially if you're just starting. But if you really want to get into the radio and want to start, let's do it, okay? So one thing I like to do, um, and you don't have to, but I reset the whole um, machine. Just go to menu 40 and reset it there. This way it's everything's fresh and clean and um, it's ready to go with no settings. So the first thing you want to do is mode. can't be in channel mode or MR or memory. It needs to be in VFO mode. So it's in frequency mode, and it needs to be in the A band, which is the top one. Now I'm going to use Glendale Malmthorne. This is here over here in Southern California. So I'm going to type one, four, six, zero, two, five. Now this information is found on websites. You got to look for a repeater near your area, and then some information will be provided for you for that repeater. Uh, the first number is going to be the receiving value or the listening frequency. Receiving RX is receiving. And I type that number on the A band. Then they're going to give you some type of shift, um, positive or negative. And usually most machines, most radios will do this for you, but you have to set it yourself. There will be an offset. And this offset in this case is 0.6 megahertz or 600 kilohertz and, and shift uh, again they'll tell you if it's positive or negative offset they will also tell you these two things usually are uh, on some more advanced uh, or you know more yeah I guess uh, radios will do this automatically for you but not all the time and then you have something called a PL number a private line number or a TCTCSS number, or a CTCSS number, or a squelch tone, right? In this case, is 135.5 megahertz. And we'll talk about this and how it relates to repeaters after my demonstration here. Okay, so I need this information. So I gotta go to number 13 uh, and utilize the transmit CTCSS, or the continuous tone code squelch system. That value is 135.5. So I go to menu. Menu. I type 13. Uh, and you can see that it's 13 right there. If, uh, if not, you can use the up and down buttons. Then press menu. C -T -C so we can activate it. So uh, we need 135, 136.5. 136.5. There it is. 136.5. Okay. That's cool. And then, next thing, um, so I want to, ooh. So, if I wait too long, it just resets, but that's okay. Press menu. Um, and see, it didn't, it didn't put in the information that I wanted. Let's do that. Let's go to menu again, down here. One, three, six, five. There's no point. You got to press menu to confirm and to enter it. Okay, I did that. All right, now we're ready. We can we can type the next one, number 25, the 25th menu. This is the sh frequency shift direction, which needs to be positive. So we press menu. And then we can use the up and down arrow. Positive, off, negative. We want positive, because that's what, that's what the website told us. We got to click menu. To confirm it and you can see there's a plus there and then the next menu is 26 we can type 26 and it's the offset offset is 600 kilohertz or 0.6 megahertz there are three places here okay ah, let's press menu menu let's enter offset now we're ready there's three zeros point these are in megahertz so i'm going to type three zeros zero, zero, zero. and then 600 to make it 600 kilohertz or 0.6 megahertz. Gotta press menu. Confirm. 
and now it's confirmed. Okay, now we can exit. You can see that it says there's a plus sign because it's saying that that's the shift. And so when I press this button, it's going to add 600 uh, kilohertz or 0.6 megahertz to this number to transmit to the um, repeater. Okay, so let's try it. I'm inside the office here. It might reach, it might not. It might just, if when, when it sends it, hopefully it'll, it'll come back with some information about the repeater or maybe a little blip, okay? Let's turn this up, let's see what happens. I gotta keep it vertical like this because that's how the antenna should be at the mountain. Check our website at cvrc.club. Isn't that cool? <laughs> that was really neat. So one of the cool things about this particular repeater is um, making sure to listen first if there's no conversation. And I was listening. There wasn't anybody talking. Um, but that's a good point. <laughs> um, to test it, you press the PTT button for about a second. Let that propagate to the mountain. Man, that's almost like 15 miles away probably. And then it will receive it and then bring back a message in this case. You heard that the repeater, it received it and now it was sending me something back. That's pretty neat. Okay, so we got it ready for a repeater. We're gonna put that down here. But the question is now, now I'm going to talk about how these repeater repeaters work. Um, so the way uh, repeaters work, and you can have different radios, of course. You don't have to have a Bofang uh, to operate the repeater. You can have like the VX6, the Yaesu VX6, or an FT2D and so forth. So let's say um, you want to use a repeater and you just want to listen so what you can do is you just can type 146025, which I did here. And if you type that address and not doing anything else, you'll be able to listen to people's conversations. And you can be listening to a conversation on the other side of a mountain or a bunch of uh, buildings. In this case, I know that with this repeater, I can talk to somebody in Burbank, which is on the other side of the mountains over here which is pretty amazing for a little tiny radio like this with this power. And I also know like something like my radio, my VX6, which is a Yesu, but I'm sure this will work too, that I've called, uh, I was on top of a building at Long Beach, uh, California. I used, and I was able to reach uh, this uh, <clears throat> Mount Thorne Glendale repeater and was able to talk to somebody. The time is Ooh. Crazy, right? Um, because this is on all the time, the station, the repeater has to have its own call sign and needs to be, you know, um, communicating to the public that it's available. Um, sometimes you'll hear uh, Morse code. That's amazing. Uh, for, again, for $25, that's pretty neat. You heard that there's some noise, um, but that's because maybe we're inside the house. And it'll be interesting to utilize this outside. But anyway, so you can be in your car, you can be listening. And that's another thing too. If you have this in the car, it might not work as well. Just because you're inside of a box. But anyway, if you have an antenna that's outside of the car, it's a different story. When you want to transmit a message to everybody else, that's the interesting thing. Um, so... Everybody's listening at 146025, but to transmit so that everybody can listen to, it needs to be it needs to be a different frequency. What frequency will it be to transmit to the repeater? Well, it's going to be 600 kilohertz or 0.6 megahertz from uh, or to 146025. So if you add 0.6 megahertz to this or 600 kilohertz 
that's going to be 146.625. That will be sending um, to the repeater. But the repeater not only needs this frequency, but it also needs an underlying tone as a key. And that's what this private line is. Uh, it's not really a private line, but it's, I think, old terminology. The CTCSS, or T, for transmit. You see, this radio also has a receiving R CTCSS, and you don't use that one. I usually don't. Um, you use the T one. And that, so when you transmit your voice or press the PTT button, it will add 0.6 to this frequency, and then it will mix um, the radio signal uh, with uh, this particular tone, um, which is, um, you can't hear that. So this tone, or this particular frequency, plus the transmit, transmitting frequency would be this plus that, which will give you 146.625, and the tone that opens the repeater. And when you speak, the repeater will automatically send out your message through a different frequency. And now we're able to use the repeater both ways. So if this person wants to send a message to you, they will wait until you speak, stop speaking, and then when they transmit, they'll transmit at 146.625. And I will be listening at 146.025. So this is not a true duplex like your telephone where you can talk to each other and then talk over each other, but it's duplex enough. And I've heard people say it's duplex. Could be wrong, but some people will say that this is a duplex type communications instead of simplex communication. Okay, so to find these numbers, you have to go through the web site, find a repeater. Uh, it's important to know the shift, the offset, the PL or the CTCSS number or squelch tone. These values are important so that you can set it on the radio. And another thing also, as a beginner, and I am a beginner too, I just got my license about nine months ago. Um, one thing you should do before you start, uh, you should listen to the repeater, listen to people speak uh, between each other, respect um, whatever it is that some of the rules that they might have on the repeater, uh, introduce yourself. But there's a particular way of doing it. And to me, sometimes that might be a little bit unfortunate because sometimes you will, you don't know what you're doing. You're a beginner and you'll just say something and some people won't respond to you. So sometimes you have to listen in the way they speak to each other. Sometimes um, you will call a particular um, call sign, you know, Mine is KN6BST. So if I wanted to talk to another person um, with their call sign, I might have to mention theirs first. Um, so there's certain types of ways of communicating. I still don't know. I mean, I do listen and I write down what they say. But there's a few times that I'm trying to communicate with someone and some people don't respond. And that's a little bit unfortunate, but don't get discouraged. Um, there are other repeaters, and sometimes these repeaters are based on clubs. And these uh, ham radio clubs are willing to share the repeaters with you, even though you're not a member. Other times they have locked down the repeater. But hopefully these steps were sufficient for you to utilize the repeater. All right. I hope that was helpful.